Hi everybody. So this picks up right after my tour of conservation fisheries. Uh, we actually got to go out with the biologists and sample one of the local rivers. Uh, this, these are in the Appalachian Mountains in Tennessee. Uh, here is a snub nose darter. Uh, we saw lots of amazing fish. There's a little sculpin and I believe a Tennessee shiner. Then this one is a blotch side log perch uh, in the Persina genus. The Persinas are my favorite of the darters. They just get really big and impressive. But yeah, we saw tons of different fish. Um, most of them weren't in their breeding colors. Some of them still had some color. But uh, in the spring, that's when everything really, really blows up in color. Uh, these were my favorite. These are tangerine darters. These guys get absolutely massive. Uh, they would make an amazing aquarium fish in a large aquarium. Uh, for a darter, these are giants. I mean, some of the ones at the bottom of the creek were looked like they were about the size of a banana. And they get that really nice orange color underneath. The personality on these was a lot of fun too. I mean, they would come and jump on your legs while you were in the creek, checking out. Uh, whenever you took a step, they'd kind of see what you were kicking up, looking for little invertebrates to eat. But yeah, absolutely beautiful fish. Uh, Tennessee has some weird fish collecting laws. I think it's pretty much totally illegal to remove live fish from the area. Um, so we weren't collecting anything, just poking around, seeing what we could see. Here is a striped neck musk turtle. This guy was super cute. Uh, another highlight for me for sure. And then also this northern studfish. I've caught northern studfish before, but none of them had any color whatsoever. Uh, these guys get really nice blue and red coloration. And then orange on the fins. They're, uh, they're a giant killifish. Yeah, the males get very, very pretty. That turtle was a lot of fun to see. I think we actually caught two of the musk turtles. Here's a closer look at him as I was letting him go. This is about full grown. They don't get, they're one of the smallest species of turtle. Pretty much all the mud and musk turtles stay about four inches. There's a couple big ones, but most don't. Then uh, that night we actually went out with the biologists to uh, Blacklight for uh, scorpions in Tennessee. A lot of people don't know this, but these southern devil scorpions range all the way up into pretty much central Kentucky's as far north as they go. Uh, and these are probably the northernmost ranged scorpions on the east coast. Some of the western ones go all the way up to Canada. But yeah, it's always a lot of fun seeing scorpions. Then this here is a flatback millipede of some species, I'm not exactly sure. These guys are all over the east coast, pretty much, all, I'm pretty sure all over the country. Um, but a lot of people don't know that millipedes actually fluoresce. At least the ones in this family do. Yeah, super cool. We saw tons of these crossing the road in the tall grass all over the place. Crawling around. They also smell like cherries if you pick them up, which I believe is a cyanide spray they give off. So they are poisonous, so don't eat them. Then the next morning I found this little adorable cicada freshly molted out of his juvenile phase. And then I let his wings harden and he ended up flying off. Super cute little guy. This is an annual cicada so these guys come out every year. But yeah, This was a couple hours later after his shell had hardened. And that does it for hanging out with conservation fisheries. Uh, please go support them on social media. They do lots of amazing work. They also have lots of fundraising events around Knoxville where they'll go uh, do fundraising nights at local bars and stuff. So if I ever do a fan meetup, I'll probably just go to one of those and hope lots of people show up to support them. Uh, but yeah, huge, huge thank you to them. Uh, this next spot is a random cliffside in the Appalachian Mountains that I always like stopping at. Uh, beautiful on top and lots of interesting stuff underneath. Uh, this here is a lampshade spider. If I remember right, there's two species in the Appalachian Mountains, um, and then there's a few species in the Rocky Mountains out west, and then there's a genus in China also, so really interesting uh, range maps. They're, I wouldn't say rare, but they're very uncommon just because how habitat specific they are. When you find them, there's hundreds of them, but it's got to be in the exact right location, and they also fluoresce under a black light, which is really cool. Yeah, really interesting spiders. They make that unique lampshade uh, web and I always see them here then next up this is under the cliff face I found this 
cute little fluorescent mushroom. Uh, if you see the moss fluoresces red, that's actually the chlorophyll. Is uh, red fluorescent under a 365 nanometer black light. But yeah, here we are. We actually got caught in a thunderstorm, so we just hung out under the cliff. But there's plenty to see while we were down here. Then in the back of the cliff, there is this small little cave section. Not really a cave, it's about 15 feet. Uh, but it was full of spring salamanders. There's about three or four inches of water on the bottom. And all these little spring salamanders having an amazing time down here. My two friends there. Yeah, there were little burrows in the mud that they were all poking their heads out. And then I actually, with this one, managed to chase him out of his burrow and get a hold of him. The filming gets a little weird here, but that's all right. I think uh, after this, I have a good clear shot of them. But yeah, these are spring salamanders. They love these little, very small, wet areas like this. There he goes, <laughs> down into another burrow. But yeah, it's a super cool little cave section. There were actually lots of different salamander species all over. Um, I believe this here is a slimy salamander. My friend Giselle here is digging up. Yeah, northern slimy salamander. And uh, right after finding this one, we turned around and they were also all over, tucked in this cave. So, real cool to just be able to walk into something like this and find all different salamander species. Cute little guys. Then here's just a extended look at the whole area. You can see the little cave was also covered in cave crickets and more lampshade spiders. Uh, also the uh, calcite in the uh, cliff face was also fluorescent. But yeah, here's just a look around this little overhang that we took shelter in during a thunderstorm. My friend poking for salamanders there. Uh, I always find green salamanders at this location. That's kind of what I was looking for on the cliff side. Um, but for whatever reason, I didn't actually see any on the cliff this time. But uh, over on this tree, actually, I managed to find one. First time I've ever found one on a tree like this. Not the most colorful one either, but he's still pretty. These are probably one of my favorite salamanders, being so arboreal. And then they fluoresce orange under the black light, which is really unique. Um, I've never seen anything else really do it like this. But there he goes. Back up a tree. They're a beautiful species of salamander. And that was all for this trip, but I actually realized I had some really old footage from a few years ago, the first time I went to this location. So here is a much nicer look at some green salamanders here and this little deer mouse we saw running across the cliff face. Uh, next adventure, we went onto the Ohio River with my buddy. You can see he was feeding his bearded dragon there. Um, but yeah, we went to the Ohio River just south of Cincinnati to this abandoned ship. Uh, it's easy to find on the internet, but I don't like giving away location details or names, so we'll leave it at that. I love seeing new things and exploring different places. You can see the inside of the boat, all the mechanical guts down there. And it's also cool you can get on top of it and walk along the uh, different bars of the uh, overhang. It's just a real fun place to explore near me. It does have some interesting history if you look it up. Um, it is not hard to find online, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, just a super cool abandoned boat in the middle of the woods. Then the final find of the day was this young stick insect walking around on this log that fell on the boat. Yeah, that does it for this video. Thanks for watching.